all my life I was quite entrepreneurial. By the age of 21, I had my own kiosk, imported things from China, and started selling them. I guess I get this from my family, because mum and dad are refugees from Vietnam. And before they came to Australia, we had large noodle factories, almost as big as this room. And it was handed down from generations of hard work, sweat, blood, and tears. And dad at the time had a motorbike as well, and he would eat four bowls of rice a day. And dad said, if you had four bowls of rice a day, then you were a rock star back in the day. But I want you all to imagine with me something that took generations to build. Imagine losing everything in one night. And that's what happened to mum and dad. War broke out. And when war broke out, that's when they fled to Australia. But look, that's another story for another time. The fact that I'm in Australia has given me an amazing opportunity to be doing what I'm doing today. Today I stand here before you all as a teacher in the art of magic online. I know it sounds crazy, uh, but that's what I do. And the reason we teach magic is we believe it's one of the best vehicles to teach people communication skills, how to build rapport, and even things like uh, team building, and so much more. So I've been doing magic now for quite a while. And um, what I've realized is with magic is that people don't realize this. But the magic actually doesn't happen in the magician's hands. The magic happens in the spectator's mind. Because what happens in the magician's hands is nothing other than sleight of hand. So you see, this is the thing. Magic has existed back 2700 BC. And what that tells us is that magicians have actually understood how the mind works. And they've understood for a long time the flaws in our minds. And if we can understand the flaws in our minds and understand magic, we'll be able to better our lives and be able to fix those flaws. Okay? So right now I'd love to share with you an amazing concept in magic. And it is called misdirection. Normally I wouldn't say all of this, but there's a beautiful lesson behind all of this. So I'd love to explain it to you all. Okay? So when I bring up these two objects, two things happen. The first thing is that you make an assumption. You assume this is a normal packet of cards, and you assume that this is a normal knife. But as a performer, I come out and I say, here's a packet of cards, and here is a knife. So then you start to turn that assumption now into a belief. That there is misdirection. Okay? So now that you believe that, if I break that belief, I can do it like this. Okay? So very simple. Now that's amazing. But this has now broken your belief, and you do it something new now. You form a new assumption. You think to yourself, this could either be an empty packet of cards, valid assumption, or it could be a packet of cards with a hole in it, also a valid assumption. Let's say I assured you and you believed me for a second time that it's a packet of cards with a hole in it. I want you to remember this image here. Okay? I'm just going to step down here just for a second. And I want you to just look at this quickly now. And if you could just pull that knife out for me. Thank you. What I'm going to do now is I want to break your belief yet again. Okay, because what's actually in here is nothing other than a block of metal. Okay, so I'll hand that out. You can feel free to hand that around. And there's a very powerful lesson behind this. In magic, misdirection is fun and entertaining. But far too often in life, we misdirect ourselves. So let me give you an example. There are times in our lives when we start to think, I, can't, I assume I can't lose these few kilos. Or I assume I cannot find the right team member for my workplace. Or I assume there is no solution to my problem. You tell yourself enough, you turn these assumptions into beliefs. And that right there is when you've misdirected yourself.